Washi is not only important to how your company makes decisions, but it's also important on how you make your own personal decisions. Remember, what's important is not making quick decisions, rather it's about making wiser decisions. What do we see about this? Well, of course, that is the ultimate level of involvement. You have individuals, team members, completely, uh, with all authority, completely making the decision. But it does take more time. That's time in the short term, though. Because everyone across functional team now has made the decision together. They're all on board. They've worked out the kinks. They've worked out the problems. And they're all on board. They're going to make it work. They're going to make it happen. The second step is to determine customer requirements. This includes the needs and the wants of the customer. Now, the customer could be the external paying customer, or the customers could be internal people. And this is the Kano model. By the way, the Kano model was named after Professor Noriaki Kano. And the model was drawn like this, where the vertical axis is the degree of satisfaction, the degree of customer satisfaction. The very highest end with a smiley face, that's a high degree of customer satisfaction. And on the lower end, of course, that's a low degree of customer satisfaction. And in the middle, we're just basically meeting the customer's needs. We're uh, not exceeding them, we're meeting them. We're at that point, and so that's why you see kind of a face where in between a smile and a grimace. On the horizontal axis, we have implementation. On the right side, that's fully implemented, criteria or, or customer need. Uh, and on the left side, it's the implementation is completely absent, it's non-existent. Remember what Dr. Deming taught us with his fourth principle. He said, end the practice of awarding business on the basis of price tag. Instead, minimize total cost. We want to choose criteria that might help to eliminate those wastes, including defects, overproduction, waiting, not using employees' minds and skills. After we've determined the criteria, we go on to the third step, which is to determine their relative importance. We do this by placing the customer requirements, or the criteria, into the first column of the concept selection form. Then we determine the relative weight of each criteria, perhaps on a one to five scale, with one being the least important and five being the most important. This is the same example that we talked about before, where we had the ease of assembly, maintainability, and serviceability, and so forth as our criteria. You see the weights listed, four, three, two, five, one, four, three, two. Now you see that some numbers, like four or three, are used multiple times. That's fine, any number can be used multiple times. Again, the key is we want to use the entire scale. First, there's functional benchmarking. And functional benchmarking can be done in any industry. And perhaps, uh, since it can be done in any industry, you might choose local companies to benchmark, the best local companies to benchmark. And you can benchmark anything because you're benchmarking a function. It could be benefits. You can go from a manufacturing company to a sales-oriented company to a service company and benchmark ben benefits. Or maybe statistical process control or, or the product development cycle. Now let's see how we did this at the company in Northern California once again. All right, so now our fourth step is we have to generate concepts, and there's different ways of generating concepts. Team members present and they define each of their concepts so that all the other team members clearly understand each of the concepts and so that each one of them can be fairly evaluated. By defining them, the team members must provide drawings or sketches or brochures, whatever it might be, as applicable. So if there's an existing concept that is currently in use, we could choose that concept as the datum. That makes it easier to compare the other ones to that datum. If not, we can choose the concept that most people are familiar with as a datum. That's another possibility. And then we place the datum concept into the first column to the right of the weight column. But you're, all, you're comparing all of them though, really. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought the big dog was quicker myself. The first one's yeah. plus. Just plus here? Just plus here and then yeah. plus plus here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Same. Same. <coughs> Same. Okay. Prop mobile. Next one, stable. Compared to the datum. Proven technology is the last criteria. Importance rating of two times two positives. That's plus four. Our previous total was plus two. Now we're at, we add another four. We're at plus six overall. And that, you see, is the overall total score for concept two. That brings us to step seven, which is synergizing for further improvement. James Swartz and Joseph Swartz 
who wrote Seeing David in the Stone, wrote, Synthesis, or putting parts together to form a whole, is the most difficult thinking skill to learn. Well, we can make it a whole lot easier when we go through the process of Nimawashi because we see all the different parts, the positives and the negatives of all the different parts, and it facilitates the idea or a methodology to bring all the parts together for an even better product or a better design.